The field of stem cell research has completely changed the medical landscape and I believe that it is called to change the way that we view medicine, the way that we practice medicine, the way that we view health and wellness and even our understanding of disease formation. When we talk about stem cells, most of the time we talk about, if you go in the news, you go on the internet, we talk about the isolation of stem cells from a source. Uh, which could be the umbilical cord, it can be the bone marrow, it can be the blood, it can be fat tissue, it can be the dental pulp. Uh, these are all sources of stem cells. Then we multiply them in the lab, we transform them, we manipulate them in the lab, or sometimes not, sometimes we just, uh, we just extract them, and then we re-inject them in the bloodstream. So all that we do is that we increase the number of stem cells in circulation with the general concept that these stem cells really have an amazing potential to help the body repair. But to me, the most important question in all of this is that if stem cells, if adult stem cells have such a potential to improve health, then what is their role in the body? Because they, they are already in our bone marrow, they are in the blood, they are in the, in the, in the, in the fat tissue, they are already there. So what, is, what are they doing to begin with before we touch them and before we do anything to them? And I think that when we understand them, we, we understand what stem cells are doing in the body, I think that this is what is really opening the door to a completely novel way of looking at medicine, health and wellness, and even disease formation. What we know today, 15 years after the beginning of this old adventure in stem cell research, is that stem cells truly constitute the natural repair system of the body. Whenever there is an injury or a problem in a tissue, this tissue will release compounds that will go to the bone marrow and will trigger the release of stem cells from the bone marrow. After two, three days, the number of stem cells in the bloodstream will increase anywhere between three to 10 times. Then as these stem cells are circulating, they don't know uh, what tissue is in need of repair. So around the second to the third day, the affected tissue will release locally another set of compounds. So that as stem cells are circulating into the fine capillaries of the affected tissue, these compounds will trigger the migration of these stem cells into the tissue. And upon contact with cellular debris of that tissue, stem cells will proliferate, will multiply, and then will transform into cells of that tissue. This is quite simply the natural repair system of the body. In this whole process, the part that has been the most studied is the release of stem cells from the bone marrow and its consequence, the number of stem cells in circulation. And the conclusion is very simple. More stem cells in circulation means that more stem cells are av available to participate to the process of tissue repair. So someone with more stem cells in circulation will simply repair and heal better. So with this in mind, the next question that science scientists had started to, to ask roughly about 10, 10 years ago or so, is that if there's such a link between the number of stem cells in circulation and health, then what if we were to trigger the release of stem cells from the bone marrow? Release our own stem cells. So if you put that into the context of what we normally know of stem cells, when we do a stem cell treatment, we inject stem cells. So we increase the number of stem cells in circulation through an injection. So the question here is, what if we were to increase the number of stem cells in circulation not through an injection, but by releasing our own stem cells. And that is really the field of research where I have done most of my work, uh, which is uh, through plants that we have discovered, plants that trigger the release of stem cells from the bone marrow. So uh, what if we were to release our own stem cells and study the impact of this on the course of various diseases. And now this work has been done by many scientific teams uh, worldwide and the data is very clear. If we can trigger the release of our own stem cells and significantly increase the number of circulating stem cells every day, then we can really change the course of various problems like diabetes, lung problem, lung disease, kidney disease, uh, liver degeneration, heart disease, uh, even diseases of the nervous system, Parkinson's spinal cord lesions, for example. Releasing our own stem cells can have a very significant impact on the development of these diseases. Now, to me, what is the most important is, is, is what has emerged from all that science that we have not necessarily looked at in, in much detail. Uh, when we do medical research, most of the time, we study diseases, we don't study health. But out of all these studies is emerging something, 
which is the fact that while we have this repair system in the body, meaning stem cells being released and migrating in tissues that are in need of repair, the same system exists without the presence of an injury, to a lesser extent, but every day of our lives, stem cells leave the bloodstream, migrate in various tissues in the body, and are responsible for the day-to-day -day renewal, repair, maintenance of tissues. So there's a phenomenon that is emerging, which when you think about it is, is so obvious. We don't think about it this way, but it's so obvious. Every single disease is linked to cellular loss. You lose cells making insulin, it's diabetes. You lose cells making dopamine, dopamine in the brain, you have Parkinson. If you lose cells making, uh, making T3, T4 in your thyroid gland, you have hypothyroidism. If you lose cells in your macula, in your retina, you have macular degeneration. Every single disease is caused by uh, a type of, the loss of a type of cells. So we lose cells like this every day. So we have this general concept that the development, uh, the development of disease is this slow decline over time as we lose cells in various tissues. But the new science on stem cells is telling us that we lose cells much more rapidly than we think, but we renew the tissues also very rapidly. So we lose health not because we lose cells. We lose health because we lose the balance between cellular loss and tissue renewal. So it is when we, lose, when we have a decline in the, num in the number of stem cells in circulation with age that our ability to repair and renew tissue declines so cellular loss gains ground. And this has been clearly shown in many studies where scientists have counted the number of stem cells in the bloodstream of people who have developed various degenerative diseases like uh, heart disease, diabetes, uh, erectile dysfunction, uh, atherosclerosis, arthritis, and so on. And then they have compared the number of stem cells in the blood circulation of these people with the number of stem cells in the blood circulation of healthy people. And across the board, the average is that we have roughly a little bit less than half the number of stem cells in the bloodstream of people who have developed various degenerative diseases. So there's a direct link here. Forget diseases. There's a direct link with the, the number of stem cells in the bloodstream and the ability of the body to maintain its organ and tissues replace the cells that are being lost in order to help the body maintain optimal health. And it is with this in mind that it's really creating a novel understanding of health and wellness. Because the best of what medicine can offer today is preventive medicine. But we cannot reach optimal health just by preventing medicine. It's almost like saying, let's try to, to become rich by preventing poverty. You don't become rich by preventing, preventing poverty. You need to have a strategy for wealth. And it's the same thing here. All this knowledge on stem cells is giving us for the first time in the medical world a platform where we can really try to reach optimal health. Because today in our society, if we think about it from a little bit of a philosophical uh, standpoint, we, we define health as the absence of disease. If you don't have a diagnosis of a certain disease, you're considered to be healthy. And you know very well that oftentimes your sleep is not the best. You cannot run five miles anymore. Uh, you cannot, your memory is not what it was to be. Uh, there's a lot of things that you know are far from being optimal. But if you don't have a diagnosis, you're considered to be healthy. This new platform about stem cells for the first time is giving us a way of thinking about optimal health. We can go way beyond just the absence of disease. We can give the body its own system, its own edge by supporting its own system of repair and renewal. We can help the body reach optimal health. And to me, that is the future of medicine. Finding ways to support the natural role of stem cells in the body to help the body function optimally.